Many think that Japan's infamous bad guy Wario was named by inverting the M of Hero Mario, a clever indication that they are the moral inverse of one another. But even more cleverly, the name is also made by blending the name Mario with the Japanese word Warui, meaning bad, so that Wario therefore literally means bad Mario. A word that has been blended together like this is called a portmanteau, and we see these all over English with words like spork, Brexit, and labradoodle. Japan not only loves to blend words together like this, but it loves to mix up the languages too. A bizarre example comes from Japan's premier milk-based soft drink Karu Pisu, or as it infamously translates into English, Kalpis. These products were rebranded as Kalpiko in Northern America, after the Japanese company became aware of the unfortunate reality that in English, Kalpis sounds like Kalpis. But while the word was put together in Japan, it is actually made from blending cal, from English's calcium, and piss, from the word sapis, which means buttery taste in the ancient Indo-European language Sanskrit. Another company that does this is Wacom, a Japanese company that makes external computer hardware, mainly graphics tablets, and their name is an innovative blend of wa, which in Japanese can mean harmony, and com, which comes from English's computer. The goal of the company's products is therefore communicated in the company's name itself. Wacom means harmony with computers. The famous karaoke is another example, as we learn in early 2000s sitcom How I Met Your Mother. Why do they call it karaoke anyhow? Was it invented by a woman named Karaoke? <laughs> These are the kinds of things I think about. Karaoke is Japanese for empty orchestra. That's hauntingly beautiful. <laughs> Kara means empty in Japanese, while OK is actually short for English's orchestra. The rest of the world has followed Japan's example in lovingly accepting this word, but in a country that gave the world the VHS, 3D printing, and the baby mop, there are far more innovative things that Japan has done with English. Usually the kinds of words that Japan borrows from English are simple common nouns, like keiki for cake, party for party, or serufi for selfie. But these words can sometimes carry more complex implications. During America's presence in Japan following World War II, the word date for date became popular to describe the rise in more casual romantic relationships. It was the same for secondo opinion, meaning second opinion, as it became common to seek the advice of a second doctor, where before that would have been seen as disrespectful. Such words imported culture, not just vocabulary. These so-called loan words, or goraigo in Japanese, are written in their own script, called katakana, which is one of Japan's three written scripts along with hiragana and kanji. Because they have their own script, words that have foreign origins are always easy to spot out in the wild. Kind of like if in English, loan words like kindergarten, tsunami, or croissant were written in a different alphabet, maybe Greek, or God forbid, windings. Katakana is also responsible for the tongue-in-cheek theory that you can make a Japanese word just by adding a vowel onto an English one. Looking at any English word, like Christmas for example, they're made up of individual consonant and vowels which together form the 26 letters of the alphabet. Japanese doesn't have an alphabet in the same sense, and for loan words it uses a syllabary where each symbol represents an inseparable consonant and vowel pair. So the two-syllable English word Christmas becomes the five-syllable Japanese word kudesumasu. Some people call these transformations Japanglish, though this term is usually reserved for loanwords that change in both pronunciation and meaning. We see this with the word feminisuto, from feminist, which was originally loaned in to describe a chivalrous gentleman who was kind to women, rather than a person who advocates for women's rights. But Japan's innovations with English gets more interesting with wasaego, or Japanese-made English. This is where Japan borrows words from English, but significantly alters the meanings. One of the more fun categories is pseudo loan words. Pseudo loan words are usually made by compounding two English words to make a pair that doesn't otherwise exist in English. A good example is bajin rodo. This word is made from bajin for virgin and rodo for road. The phrase virgin road has no specific definition in English, but in Japanese, it is the name for a wedding aisle. Traditionally, the last road a couple walks down is virgins. 
One might think the term level up was coined by English video game makers, but it was actually originally put together as the pseudo loanword reburu apu in Japan, and long before its application to video games, it could be used to describe the process of getting better at anything, like cooking, running, or English speaking ability. The use of apu or up as a suffix is common in Japanese and is used in other pseudo loan words like imeji apu for image up, which is to upgrade your physical appearance. Research indicates that of the new words entering Japanese dictionaries every year, at least 60% are katakana English loanwords or derivatives, and this comes with some controversy. After confusedly watching the daily news, a 71-year-old man sued the biggest broadcasting station in Japan because he couldn't understand the sudden use of new English loanwords like risuku for risk, toraburu for trouble, and shisutemu for system, which were being used despite there being legitimate Japanese alternatives. This sparked a debate in Japan about the overuse of English loanwords and their threat to traditional Japanese. The reasons why a news broadcasting station would choose to do this reveal some of the cultural thinking behind loanwords in general. Some researchers have suggested that Japan uses English loanwords to culturally distance itself from controversial subjects, but it might be more accurate to say that loanwords can euphemize or soften these controversial topics, like unemployment. Where the official Japanese word for unemployment office would be shokusho anteisho. The Japanese government itself charmingly prefers to call this division haro waku for hello work. It's the same for sexual services like rabu hotaru or suneku bar, which use loanwords to advertise their services less directly. Finally, the use of a loanword might mark a person as being an internationally aware and well read citizen. Many loanwords got their start in Japan through companies that use product advertisements to appeal to people's desires to feel contemporary and metropolitan. But whatever the explanation, English in Japan remains an interesting example of language innovation.